निमेषाभ्य जगद प्रलयोदय तम शक्तिचक्रविभव प्रभव शंकर नुम तम शक्तिचक्रविभव प्रभव शंकर We have completed the first part of Shiva Sutra. Shambhavo Bhaya. This uh, Shambhavo Bhaya part, so can say the fundamentals of the philosophy, the theory we are going to talk. so starting from the state of consciousness so there were a discussions about uh, achievements and the last uh, sutra it was about connections of mantras mantra virya anubhava so now this uh, mantra how it works and how the sadhaka become one with the mantra when he chants the mantra after mantra japa so the sutra start with that the essential characteristics of mantra we chant the mantra but uh, the mantra is there in the mind here the similar discussion is there in taittiriya upanishad in taittiriya upanishad second part there is a discussion about manomaya kosha so the manomaya kosha so it's a mind only so there the mantra itself says the upanishad itself says the mind has many parts there it is discussed the discussion is on vedas so it is said the rigveda ajurveda and samaveda all these are mind so all the chantings are done by mind and the effect goes to mind therefore the vedas are in mind that is what the discussion there the same thing is uh, discussed here in a different uh, level in accordance with uh, the tantra philosophy now how this mantra works so as we know when we chant the mantra the energy produced from the mantra is from our mind only it's not um, uh, anything something coming from outside but this mantra as as i said these mantras uh, have the special energy or uh, it, it can uh, make the energy special so whatever there in our mind and body it recreates reproduce in a way that like the mirror reflects the sunlight so mirror is not producing the light but the sunlight is reproduced reflected in mirror seems to be stronger than the 
sunlight outside the reflection similarly something happens here the all pervading energy the reflected energy in the mind and along with consciousness because without consciousness it is not possible nothing is possible as we had discussed the, this point in the in, in the connection with desires so the consciousness and the energy outside is reflected through mind so whatever reflected through mind is effective in our action the outside energy will not help us unless we are not uh, using it through our pranayama or the mind the outside energy is there is, there is too much energy outside but we can't use it unless it is not uh, coming through our body mind elements so this mind works as a reflector of all pervading consciousness and energy for that to make the channel the mantras are uh, no repeated so to make the mind tuned as we tune our uh, uh, tv set or radio to cast the uh, the broadcasting outside similarly the mind is tuned with the special energy so the mantras as a special mantra a particular mantra will attract a special energy connected to that so this is the theory it says so this uh, for this it, it, um, we have to make the mind special it means we have to train the mind the mind should be aspirant for receiving it so this making this mind ready to receive it is we, what we call as sadhana so when regularly we practice this practice become a training for mind to receive the energy it is tuned with that so this way when we uh do this sadhana for a prolonged time the mind is identified with that mantra and the deity or the consciousness connected to that mantra so as i said each mantra has different syllable alphabets so the alphabets combination is a energy combination so again i am saying that this energy is not created from outside this energy is uh, connected by mind only because the alphabet has not its own energy like you no know, uh, the fire has its own energy like alphabet has its own energy no alphabet is the medium or the mantra is a medium to recreate the energy from our own mind and body elements attracting outside energy so this is what here the discussion is the shakta upaya the second part is called shakta upaya so shakti means we know power to so shakta ha mean one who has power is called shakta it means powered empowered the so shakta ha is empowered so that is how the empowered it we hear it means sadhaka so he is empowered with uh, Uh, many sadhanas the means of his achievements that is sadhanas 
to the first sutra comes Chittam Mantra. Chittam Mantra. Chittam Mantra. So, Chittam means mind. Here we take mind in general. But in particular, the mind which is the reflector of consciousness is called Chittam. The Chitt means pure consciousness. The Chitta means where the consciousness is reflected. The first reflected consciousness is called Chitta. So this Chitta is Mantra. He is directly saying Chitta is Mantra. Now how this Chitta is Mantra? So now this Chitta, if the Chitta is meditating on Mantra, it means it is meditating on the deity inherent in mantras, the energy inherent in mantras by nature, no, its own production. Then the question comes, if anybody chant mantra, can they produce the same energy? Because like Om, Reem, Gleam, there are so many mantras. If anybody chant that without knowing the meaning, without knowing the meditation, the deity of uh, the uh, enshrined deity of the mantra, if he gets the benefits. Not. It, it is not. Why? Because, as I said, if you just chant the mantra without knowing, without knowing the sadhana of that, you will not get the right energy or sometimes it goes wrong because it will activate some elements in your body and then it can go wrong. So before chanting certain mantras, some purification should be there. Purification means like you are uh, uh, making some, uh, what you say, some preparation for receiving the energy. Otherwise, if you wrongly receive, it is harmful. It means it will not help you. So this is very important. The purification of body, mind and prana before receiving certain energies. So therefore, traditionally when we chant mantras, before chanting mantras, they have a uh, they have a practice of sadhanas. They called shodhana, shuddhi karana, pavitri karana, and so all these sadhanas are there. So then only you can receive because uh, mantra will activate the energy inside. If the person, the mind, person here is mind, which is going to receive our mind or body, if not prepared is not fit for receiving that, then it can go wrong. It means it has some uh, scientific reason and it has some uh, practical reasons. Like uh, any of these sadhanas, the pranayama, we are doing many pranayamas. If we are not fit for doing pranayamas, pranayama also can go wrong. And not only pranayama, like food and medicines. If your body is reacting to some medicines, you cannot take some allergic, something is there. So similarly, all these energies, all these special sadhanas, to be practiced after a good guidance from a master or no, somebody knows, about it. So this this is the mantra. Now uh, when we chant the mantra, the deity of that mantra, the energy inherent inherent in that mantra, and the consciousness reflected in the mantra. This is called the mantra shakti, the power of mantra. So this is what discussed in uh, the Taitari Upanishads, which was I was quoting there now. So there, uh, in the commentary of that mantra, 
Shankaracharya ji is uh, elaborately discussing how this mantra works, how repetition of mantra works. So there he says, when we chant, as we know, the consciousness is reflected in all the beings, all the, all, the, all, on the, all this creation. Everywhere it is reflected. But some places or some reflection, we call it living beings. And some reflection is non-living beings. Although the reflection is everywhere. Chaitanya and the energy is everywhere. Similarly, the mind is a special uh, object which can reflect the energy, the consciousness. The mind which can specially receive some special qualities through this sadhana is called Rishi, the mind of Rishi, the mind of Mahatmas, that is special mind. So there he says, the reflection on the thoughts or the words we pronounce vocally and mentally. Because we pronounce words in two ways, vocally pronouncing and mentally pronouncing. So the mental pronunciation is called mantra japa, the real mantra japa. That's what we vocally do also. It is japa only chanting. But the japa, real japa is the mental repetition of mantras. So there the consciousness is reflected. It is called mantra and mantra shakti. So he says, mantra is not only alphabets, the letters in that mantra. Mantra is the reflection of consciousness there. Therefore, this mantra is eternal. The mantras are not created or destroyed. Mantras appear in these purified minds and we use it for our uh, meditation and uh, uh, gaining knowledge and we use it and then it disappears. So even a simple, very simple mantra can give you the ultimate knowledge of experience because the even that simple mantra if properly chanted and meditated can uh, connect you with the main stream of energy of the consciousness so therefore here it is said directly chittam mantra so the chitta the mind the other mind uh, is a special mind, you cannot say the mind in general, but this mind is a trained mind. Uh, the mind is prepared for uh, chanting and uh, meditating. The aspirant has the special mind. So that mind is holding the mantra and the mantra will be one with the mind, the chitta. Then the person is with that mantra and then he will uh, have all the you know, basic qualities of the deity he is meditating on or the deity connected to mantra. So this is how it goes. If somebody is meditating on Shiva, the Shiva mantra, we chanting Shiva mantra, then some qualities of Shiva will appear in him. So this is how it works. Identification. So then Nestu Sutra says, Prayatnaha Sadhakaha Prayatnaha the word meaning is effort in general. Sadhaka means one who is uh, doing some action to fulfill his desire. That is called sadhaka. So this is the word meaning of that. So generally we call our spiritual sadhakas are sadhakas. But all other sadhakas are also sadhakas. Who are 
no uh, try to fulfill their desire they are all sadhakas so prayatna ha sadhaka so now what is this prayatna prayatna is a correct application of the method of sadhana is called prayatna the correct application of the method of sadhana the practice is called prayatna so this prayatna is divided in two part the first part is as we know physical part of the application the second part is the mental part of the application so we know a method or practice so first we try to know the physical part of that like uh, suppose we got a mantra or uh, or meditation techniques we try to know how to sit in that meditation what is the time of uh, particular time for meditation and all this the what food we should consume or uh, what we should avoid all this we will uh, we will try to know this is, this is called the physical part of prayatna so with when that part is completed or completely known then the second part comes as i said all the purification process also has two parts the physical part and the mental part so we should know both in some cases people say there is no need to see physical part only use uh, your bhava no whatever you uh, think uh, in the, uh, the mind if your mind is pure then everything is pure it's not the case mind cannot be pure unless your physical purity is not there if it is, it is uh, the physical purity it means the practice which we need for the mind that with only with that the mind can be pure so this is this is the theory people say like that but uh, it is not completely true because in all our scriptures now tradition says that if you want to practice something mentally or intellectually you should practice from the physical level we start the practice from physical level. in yoga also you see asana pranayama and all those when we start with physical level why because this body and mind is so connected so you cannot separate if body is uh, doing something separate and mind is doing something separate it is not possible it will not give uh, the correct result so therefore two parts like physical part and mental part so when physical part is completed so you know all about uh, physical part what is what you should know do for this then the mental part the mental part also we have step by step progress when we follow the step by step progress then the practice would be easy otherwise uh, there would be many confusions so first second step third step so then the process is completed our brain works systematically brain has no confusion no it, it has it is it's a uh, is uh, uh, working is uh, uh, in a systematic way correctly the step by step first step second step third step like that but how the confusion comes you know when we miss in between something if we don't know the correct progress then the confusion comes so we take the correct progress step by step progress everything is clear there so that is how the practice goes and we should the sadhaka should know the mental practice the prayatna so this uh, prayatna is called sadhaka because this uh, practice correct practice will fulfill your desire so therefore it is sadhaka desire means not not only uh, the uh, desire what we uh, call it as desire this is desire means you are aiming to do something so that is called desire so that that would be fulfilled 
सो प्रयत्न साधक है दैकंड सूत्र सो दे आर डायरेक्टली टॉकिंग हाउ इट वर्क विद्या शरीर सत्ता मंत्र रहस्य द मंत्र रहस्य द सीक्रेट ऑफ मंत्र इज विद्या शरीर सत्ता द विद्या शरीर सत्ता इज मंत्र रहस्य जस्ट नाउ वी I started with that discussion only. So vidya sharira sakta. Vidya means knowledge. Sharira sakta means is a body of highest highest knowledge. Sadi sharira means body. So this is a body of highest knowledge. Vidya sharira sakta. Sakta existence, or we can say inherent existence. The vidya sharira satta is a mantra rahasya. Now, what does it mean? The secret of mantra lies on the existence of the highest body of consciousness. So, the highest body of consciousness we created because consciousness has no shape, no body. no uh, you know no start and end point nothing so consciousness is all pervading with the same amount so how we say this a body of consciousness so it means we selected some part of consciousness and meditating on that like uh, all the bodies are having consciousness but we select uh, heavenly you know divine bodies like shiva vishnu uh, divine mother like that why so reason is there the consciousness is more reflected or uh, we understand we believe that they have full energy or full reflection of consciousness so where we think like that we meditate on that the reason why uh, the that in that body that uh, special uh, divine body is more reflecting because it is pure that body is pure mind is pure so when we also get the mind purified then our mind will also reflect in the same way so this is the secret of mantra he says so the words consist in the mant- uh, mantras that is mantra means words only so words and syllables uh, so the man- word consist in the mantras has a special knowledge the reflected consciousness and it has a special body and then the shape comes therefore it is quite possible when you chant mantra for a long time you will see different shapes different bodies like you know bhagavad darshanam it can it is possible because as i said the special word will uh, reflect in your mind with a special shape so when you chant shiva mantra you will see shiva in dream first then we when you sit for meditation you will see shiva because that shape will come and the mantra has colors it will create colors in the brain because everything is happening in the brain so when you chant mantras some energy is vibrating there so some color is produced so everything is produced inside but when you have the darshan of shiva you may feel that shiva is appear appearing in front of you he appeared for you in front of you uh, as real but it is all happening in the mind so it 
can mind can create all this we have a holographic uh, theory of brain so it is possible the brain can uh, create a holography as real so you will feel that it is you, and you will feel all the, now you can touch and you can talk everything can be done the holography has so much power because after doing this mantra japa brain gets the special powers as we discussed in last last sutras so the yogi gets special powers so it can create that so vidya sharira satta mantra rahasyam गर्भे चित्त विकासो विशिष्ट विद्या स्वप्न गर्भे चित्त विकासो विशिष्ट विद्या स्वप्न so here the garbha garbha means is not uh, the womb that we call it garbha garbha can be uh, you know something covered with can be garbha it is called like agni garbha vasuntara so inside the earth there is fire so it it is covered with like that so garbhe chitta vikaso avishishta vidya sapna ha <coughs> so when uh, in ignorance or in maha maya the ignorance is called maha maya there is a uh, something that covered so the real nature of self is covered this garbha is covered with maya so maya is not outside as we know maya is in our mind so the all creation is because of maya it is the power of ishwara because you don't see the reality of creation you only see the manifestation the modification of creation so therefore it is covered the real uh, what you say the reality is covered by unreal modifications the shape and the name and color whatever we see in the objects they are all covering elements they are covering it means you will not see the reality there so where the reality is not known an unreal is taken to be real is called maya the reality of the object is not known but what we see as real is not real it is the shape and form and so so this is called the garbha so in in ignorance uh, in that uh, development the satisfaction in the limited phenomenal powers is confusing knowledge like a dream so chitta vikasa chitta vikasa means expansion of the mind so you contemplate on that the many many powers uh, as we know from yoga sutra there are many powers vibhutis you can create from our chitta and uh, this uh, the uh, the experiences we have that is also from chitta and we can have the ultimate knowledge by practicing that is also through mind so that is called chitta vikasa so chitta vikasa is avishishta vidya sapna is confusing knowledge like a dream as i said it is it has some covering in the dream we experience everything but it is all confusing knowledge there is no clarity so you start with something seeing something and end with something else you may be walking and then you will uh, 
uh, get uh, down from uh, uh, no, some vehicle or uh, sometimes from train or somewhere. So you are walking, but you will change to another fifties. So it is all confusing. So the confusion in the this creation, as we experience, is because of avishishta vidya sopnaha. Vidya means knowledge. Whatever the experiences, the the phenomenal powers, or this the experience we have, the daily experiences by the sense organs. This is all called uh, avishishta. Is it in general? Vishishta means specific. Avishishta means general. So when it is in general form, we are confused with. So the confusing knowledge. So now what we should do? So here. the sutra trying to convey is so when the mind is turned towards the light of consciousness the origin of thoughts you will get complete clarity of the thoughts so when mind is outward it is only receiving the objects outside outward it has full of confusions not only confusions worries you are always uh, worrying about the future what would happen so these are this will happen so there we have to go to the origin of the thoughts origin of the consciousness so that is garbha chitta vikaso avishishta vidya sapna so this is uh, uh, the, the commentators have commented interpreted this uh, sutra in different ways because it has uh, all the words we can turn to uh, in different levels as we understand it so garbha chitta vikaso avishishta vidya sapna so sapna is the uh, the main key word here sapna as dream dream we have some experience with dream but dream is always confusing there is no clarity of thought or clarity of knowledge in dream the similar thing happened when we are in waking state also so the waking state which we experience is also a sort of you know as a, as a form of dream as we are confusing with many things Uh, we are uh, when we try to know what the objects are first we are we think about why we want to know this from there it starts but why we want to know all this why we want to study all this so something we are missing so when we uh, find the answer why we want to study or why we want to know the objects outside the experiences outside you will get the answer as there is no objects outside the objects are inside so now again the confusion if uh, objects are inside how we see outside so this is uh, the interesting point vedanta tech talk about is the objects are really not there in their form what we see as objects is all just a reflection of manifestation and this manifestation what we see outside is a ref- again the reflection of mind as we know in the, in the modern science the, the brain science says as though we uh, we think that objects are outside and we are uh, receiving seeing it perceiving it but everything is happening inside the mind is not outside the mind whatever is happening inside the mind only the eyesight and the sense organs they uh, produce it as as per it, uh, as it is outside but it is not true so this is what the theory we are talking about so when if it is inside as we see in the dreams the after sleep what dream we see that is inside of it the similar thing is we are seeing outside only the difference is the dream there is only mind no sense organs 
here with sense organs we are seeing it therefore we feel it outside but it is not true therefore the sapna is very interesting in this case vidya samutthane swabhavike khejari shivavastha vidya samutthane vidya samutthane when the right knowledge comes samutthane the rising of the knowledge correct knowledge then the ignorance disappears when the light is there there is no darkness so the vidya samutthane the rising up of the knowledge swabhavike so this is uh, what is swabhavika real the real uh, form of knowledge the belong uh, belong to the nature or self knowledge the real knowledge of shiva the swabhavike the swabhava here it is consciousness because when we say swabhava swabhava can be translated as nature characteristics this is also swabhava the inherent character of an object is also called swabhava so here the swabhava i means existence consciousness and bliss so when there is consciousness the experience of consciousness it has two other uh things connected to that two other uh, forms of that that is existence and bliss so without existence conscious consciousness cannot be experienced therefore existence is consciousness existence is consciousness and consciousness is existence and when this consciousness is experienced when we say i, I know myself the bliss the relaxation is also there this the three together we experience in our deep uh, deep sleep there we are relaxed so we are in a bliss okay that is accepted and we know that we are there so the existence is also proved and we know that we are there the knowing is also there the consciousness is also there so we never feel that we are absent in deep sleep the experience of absent is not there we always feel we are there and we feel it that our existence is not aparted or destroyed is always there and existence cannot be destroyed existence is always existence na sato vidyade bhavo na bhavo vidyade sata gita says so what is there it is there always what is not there it cannot come to the form of existence therefore that is called swabhava and this swabhava cannot be changed the swabhava or the characteristics of one object cannot be changed that is what sankhya says if our our swabhava our uh, essential nature is uh, sat chit anand existence and consciousness and bliss it cannot be changed if once we think about this at least once if we think about this that we are in the state of that pure existence pure consciousness then the all world will change the mind will change itself because mind is lacking this knowledge mind does not know from where it works and for what it is working the purpose is not known to mind 
therefore mind is always trying to uh, find some purpose in life the purpose of life is being with our own self ultimately for that we do all the karmas and uh, sadhanas upasanas and everything so that is called swabhavike vidya samutthane now what what is the state of that khechari shivavastha khechari khe means sky the moving in the sky of consciousness is called khechari we have one mudra is also khechari is called a mudra khechari mudra mudra means you know that seal something concealed is called mudra seal sealing uh, like lock we lock the door so a locking something like say locking is called mudra in uh, hatha yoga we have different mudras in tantra we have uh, many uh, hand mudras this is all mudra khejari mudra so this is also one mudra discussed in uh, hatha yoga pradipika as well as uh, another uh, tantric books but here it means uh, when he gets this knowledge of his own existence and bliss he will be in khejari moving in the sky he will feel that i am always there and there is no non existence of me so then what for what i am worrying about i am very everywhere so i can get that so now the problem is again you will think what would be the benefit of that if i get this knowledge what would be the benefit uh, so then he says shiva avastha the state of reality you will be in that shiva always you will be in that bliss it doesn't mean that you will not take food and you will not do other activities it doesn't mean that it means you will realize that my state of being is this whatever i am doing is all connected to that it's a, it's a play of say uh, the all life is a play is a game uh, we are doing this and that and getting something and good and bad all those things so this is shiva avastha is real the the state of reality so that this khejari here the khejari is uh, not uh, uh, the outside practice or physical practice it is knowledge itself the moving on the chari means moving the khe means khai the moving in the sky of consciousness knowledge so there the mind is everything because here we can see in all sutras they are giving so much importance to knowledge the mind and it works and as i said to get this state of experience we need to practice some physical methods you no know, some follow some physical methods so that those are the purification methods asana and all those we follow for that to khejari shiva avastha so this is ultimate <coughs> the super consciousness level uh, in the highest level of experience highest level of shiva experience highest level of bliss experience this is all we can translate as shiva avastha to so, vidya samutthane swabhavike khejari shiva avastha the fifth sutra was of this the first thing is the most the highest yeah so khejari shiva avastha is not even higher means no khejari shiva avastha is a when when you uh, understand yourself like the swabhavik jnana the experience of your own experience so that is like you are like uh, floating in the air so you will feel like yeah that feeling the feeling the experience of that khejari so there is no physical action as i mentioned just now there is no physical action mentioned that you may be floating and no it's not like that so you will feel that you are in a highest 
stage. So that stage is stated as Shivavastha. So Shivavastha, like uh, the state of being, is called Shivavastha. The experience is called Khejar. Now, to experience this uh, highest uh, state, you need to do sadhanas, as we said. Now, for that, there should be a guru. So, without guru, it's not nothing is possible. So, this says the upayas, no? Guru rupayaha. Ah, the Guru is the means of this practice. Without that it is not possible. People ask, if a good book can be a Guru? The book we have, we are reading the book and book, book is guiding you. Uh, it is like, uh, it cannot be. Book is only giving informations. And if you have some background, some practice, if you already know what the book says about, then you can get more information about that, more clarity on that, or with the clarity of thought process, you can get it. Like uh, uh, if somebody reads the book, the subject which is not related to him, if I read the uh, uh, the, uh, the medicine book or uh, MBBS book or, or these books. So technical ter terms they used, I have no idea, I have not studied medicine. So I will not understand. But I can read the book. I will get some information, but it is not practical for me. Similarly, a MBBS doctor, if he studies Brahma Sutra and all those books, he will not understand anything. So he will get some information, but that won't be useful for his practice and works. The books are like that, all the books. So, after reading book or before reading book, you should have a master, a teacher to connect with the subject. Uh, that is all the practical way of understanding. Therefore, guru is must in this knowledge. Without that it is not possible. So, guru rupayaha so, now, what is the speciality of Guru? So, Guru's power of grace is everything. It's not the words he utters. That is helping you by giving information. But there is a power behind the words he utters. That is the grace of the Guru. He said somewhere in, uh, uh, in this uh, test, Guru or Guru Tara Shaktir Guru Vaktra Gada Bhavet. It's very interesting. It is uh, defining the Guru. He says, Guru's power of grace in the mouth of the Guru is greater than the Guru himself. It means Guru is not a physical body. Guru is only a medium. A powerful medium. So Guru is connecting the highest knowledge with his grace, his sadhana, his experience. Therefore, Guru's words is greater than Guru himself, it says. The grace in his words is, of course, greater than the physical body of Guru himself. So, without his body, it not. Therefore, sometimes Gurus, they don't know what they do because they can produce better Shishyas, maybe greater than themselves. They produce better Shishyas. How it's possible? Because the gurus are the medium of that. This is said of a spiritual gurus specially, but normally the teachers, of course, they are also giving some knowledge, something. So we respect them as gurus. But this uh, definition is given for spiritual gurus. 
who has no selfish uh, no connection with sishyas the guru is only connecting with sishya himself to just uh, uh, no give the knowledge so in that connection is there so therefore after completing the knowledge or after giving away the knowledge there is no connection with the guru or guru, guru doesn't want to connect him again he will send him off but the shishya we have the connection the whole life because he was he he he, he, he got the knowledge he, he was blessed with by him so therefore it will continue so the guru's power of grace is such it is uh, you cannot put it in words uh, so we don't know how it possible so guru can make uh, like no a the statue is made of stone how the stone is normal stone and the artist he works on that with his ideas and then he makes a beautiful murti or shape about uh, from that similarly the guru with his grace his uh, power of teaching he makes enlightened shishyas so that is the power of guru so therefore without guru it is not possible in the upanishad it is there acharya van purusho veta आचार्याध्येव विद्या साधिष्ठं प्रापत आचार्यस्तु ते गदिम वक्ता सॉल्ड इन उपनिषद्स यस्य देवे परा भक्ति यथा देवे तथा गुरु गुरु इज लाइक गॉड सो यू प्रे टू गॉड यू प्रे टू गुरु दे आर द सेम सो हु व्हिच द साधक व्हेन ही डस दैट और ही एक्सेप्ट गुरु आस everything so his grace continues if guru is not in the body physical body also you will get the guidance that is another realm of that if you are connected with guru and guru is not in physical body but you will uh, get the continuous uh, support and guidance from the guru so that is the importance of guru now guru also uttered words so he teaches through words only okay so it seems that words are more important than gurus that is what it is but is not the words uttered by guru will guide you and it will give some special grace power but the same word uttered by someone else it not will not give you that same effect so that this difference is there so that difference is uh, that is why uh, if you read the books the same words you are utter like you have everything written here you just read or you have another books you can read it but getting knowledge from there is different it, of course you get some information everything but the word uttered by guru makes that word special therefore guru's guru vachanam is very important as i said sometimes guru is not in alive but the grace will continue to come to you through that connection so therefore guru rupaya ha is guru is everything at what is it says the sadhana starts from guru and ends with the uh, upadeshams and advices of Uh, the path he shown so we went with that start with that and end with that so therefore guru is the means of this sadhana om purnamatah purnamidam purnat purnamudasyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate 
ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹ್ಮ